Hey, Natural Born Sisters. Welcome to another episode of Kinky in the Kitchen, where every swirl, curl, coil, and wave is celebrated. You'll hear inspiring stories from women who have left straight hair, wigs, and weaves behind, despite the discrimination and bias, to reclaim their power by rocking their natural hair. Be it spiraled, kinky, defined, or straight. Whether you're already a natural sister or still finding the courage to unleash your beautiful coils, you're not alone, and you're in the right place. Let's get to know your host. She's passionate passionate about inspiring black women to rock their natural hair with confidence, teaching our black natural hair wearing women how to show up despite hair discrimination and biases. She's natural like you and rocks her kinks in the kitchen loud and proud. She's Lisa E, aka Natural Born Sister. What's up, Natural Born Sisters? It's your girl Lisa E, aka Natural Born Sister, aka Living My Best Life. Welcome to the Kinky in the Kitchen podcast, the show that highlights black women who are rocking their natural hair with confidence, despite discrimination and bias. So the holidays are over and I am so glad. Um, This is the reason I did not publish last week as too much was going on, but I'm back. (laughs) So let's go ahead and get into it. Last week, we talked about different types of hair shame. We talked about styling hair shame, professional hair shame, as it relates to corporate and discrimination hair shame. And some might experience all of these hair shames or just one or two. And we talked about the different ways to tackle hair shame and how it's okay to have it. Since we come from a background where hair was looked upon as a downward looked upon, you know, they really looked down on us. It's difficult not to experience some sort of hair shame. But today, today we talk about how natural hair can be hard difficult to keep and maintain. Hair shame has become some of the causes of women giving up on their natural hair journeys. And again, going back to not knowing how much, you know, not knowing much about our own hair. So I had a conversation with the natural born sisters and about how natural hair is hard. It's hard as fuck. And if you haven't experienced difficulty in your natural hair journey, then consider yourself lucky because If you did not grow up with your hair being natural and it's not hard for you, then you're doing great. But I have a dilemma and I definitely go against the grain with this one. Well, until I figured out a subpar solution that I most definitely would have to get used to. So you know how they say you need to add water to your hair before doing anything to it. So when, when do you do it? I wear braid out. So what after a braid out before braid out? Nope. That's when the sense of doing a braid out is not a braid out. So what's the sense of doing it? Every morning? Night? When? Because if you have 4C hair like me, it's really not an option when it comes to styling your hair using water. Because like I always say, the shrinkage is real. These watering techniques work well for Three textures to 4A, maybe even 4B, I can throw that in there. I can throw that texture in there as well because there isn't much shrinkage when it comes to these hair types. Now, wetting 4 type hair, especially 4C, has real shrinkage, which gives you limited options for styling. Unless your hair has nice length gain, then you may have more options. But otherwise, you should out of luck. So my hair is close to medium length. Not that close, but it's, it, it's, it's longer than short, close to medium. When it's wet, it's super short because of shrinkage. And on top of that, it's very coarse. And I did some research, you know me, to see the kinds of styles that can be achieved for this hair type. And for the most part, they were short styles. So you see what that mean, that what does that tell you that you might as well just go short if you're going to be using water anyway. So if you have close to medium length hair, you have no choice but to wear short styles as it will shrink to short anyway. I found out there are different ways you could wear it. So as far as limited styling, yes, you are limited, but there are variations of one style that you can achieve. So the style types I found are, and I'm going to, as I 
as I briefly give you a background of each style, I'm going to tell you what the style is and I'm going to give you the brief description of the style and then I'm going to continue to move on to the next one. So if you miss anything, it's you can always go back and listen. So, so the styles types that I found are the short tapered cut. That's one. Now this style will give you a glamorous look depending on your head shape. Now for this style, my opinion, I feel that you should have a round head or even an oval shape head. Something that goes without points. If that makes sense, it just goes round. Now this cut, it will complement your face if you have those face types and give you more time in the morning due to less maintenance. So if this is you, check it out and let me know how you do with it. All right. Now this next style is extra short. It's an extra short hairstyle. And this style is about a good two to three inches moisturized. Okay. So that means moisturized, meaning when you comb it, you're giving it length, it's stretched out a little bit, right? You can enhance your curl pattern here as well. And it's a good look for anything that you want to do. Now, if you are rocking three to four inches, you can do a tapered cut as well. So let's go ahead and get more creative here. Let's do it in my, in my go-to style, which is the Mohawk style. Taper the sides into a defined shape. Like when I say defined shape, I'm talking like barbershop style, geometrical styles. Cause what's, going to happen here for those 4C textures, you're going to have a little hair there, or you may have it low. It's not going to be bald. Otherwise you're not going to get those shapes, right? I want you to get defined shapes and those size or even permanent parts like cut parts in, because this is what's going to make it stand out. It's going to enhance the curl pattern on the Mohawk. So, Go ahead and moisturize it. And this way you'll get that, oh my God, that defiant look. And it's it's super casual, but you can also dress it up if you want to, too. Yeah, but if you want something more formal, your mohawk should be more defined, you know, maybe moisturize it a little more, bring it down to the front. But the way I'm expressing, well, not expressing, but how I'm explaining it, it's more of the hair going all over the place. It's almost like a clean, messy look if you get my draft. Now, the next hairstyle, which I'm not so fond of for myself, but I don't do this to show just for me. I want to be accommodating to every sis that listens to the show, right? So I am so appreciative. So I want to show my appreciation. Now this style I want to talk about next is called the Kinky Pixie. It's not that easy to maintain. However, it will give you about two weeks with minimal maintenance. And if your hair is a 4C texture, you may not have much flexibility in this hairstyle. If it's super short, if you want the style to last. Now, this one is hard. It's like hard to imagine without imagery. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna provide some photos at the end for each style. But this one especially, that's why I'm mentioning it here in this style because I need you to see what I'm talking about. I don't think description, brief description here is going to be enough. So please tune into the YouTube version if you would like to capture the images at Kinky in the Kitchen on YouTube, right? So the next one, this one is interesting, I found. The next one is a wrapping flat twist. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a style with multiple flat twists wrapped around the head, like in a beautiful design. Now, I've seen people use flat twists as if they were doing corn rolls, maybe going all the way back or maybe doing one around the front, bringing it to the back and up on the side, but multiple sized ones I've never seen. Now, most people would say a style like this is a protective style and your hair will grow. And guess what I say? No. Why? Because your hair doesn't need a protective style to grow it. It will grow regardless. Your hair grows from your scalp. Okay, so let me tell you what protective styling really does and why people say this as if it's just putting in a protective style that makes your hair want to grow. What it basically does, it protects the hair, just like it says. So here is when they say protective styling grows your hair strands. You can do a lot of damage to the ends of your hair wearing out in a natural state. And if you're not using the right product or even maintaining it from jump, you know what I mean? 
So protective styling helps with this. It protects the ends from being exposed to things it does not like, including the environment. And 4C here, it's like a magnet for hair aside. <laughs> hair aside, like I just made that up out of the blue. I don't know where it came from. But yeah, it takes more work to maintain and grow it. And for any hair type treatment of your hair with the correct products makes it a beautiful environment on top of that scalp. So keeping it in a protective style keeps you from messing with it every day. It's like giving it a break. You know, it can also cause breakage, especially for those with finer hair types like myself. And again, it's used to give your hair a break, an opportunity to grow without breaking, point blank. Okay, so I hope you got that because I want to continue. So let's go ahead and continue. I got a couple of more styles that can work for our hair um, that can be wet to accommodate great styling. Now, this one is super easy, but it can be a beast to foresee here, meaning it can be rough depending on what gives you the best stretch to be able to achieve this style. The wash and go. Now, the wash and go gives you at least one to two weeks of style. However, although this is a wash and go, doesn't mean you don't keep it moisturized, right? This is a huge nest for breakage if not taken care of properly. And be sure to keep it moisturized all the whatever you do to keep your hair from breaking. Okay. It's very important because you can get very comfortable with washing goals and get up in the morning and finger style it and go. Although you can do that on maybe most days, but you're going to have to have a couple of days thrown in there where you're going to have to do something to those strands. Right. So the next one is one of my faves and it's easy to achieve and it's good on the ends of your strand the finger strand twist. This one takes work, but it's so worth it, sis. You get at least two weeks plus from this style and it's beautiful and it protects your strands almost like a protective style because I say that when you strand, when you do the uh, finger twist, your hair is being all coiled into one strand. So your ends are in there and it's being protected. And you can do it with taper cut on the sides or just short on the sides or don't mess with the sides at all. And it's great for every occasion, casual or formal. You cannot go wrong with this style, sis. You cannot go wrong with this style, but don't take my word for it. Go ahead and try it, sis. You won't regret this one. Trust me. Trust me on that one. So my last one. It's called a short layered bob. Now, this 4C style can be done with finger twists, two strand twists, or even a wash and go, especially if you can attain that tight curl pattern on the wash and go, like most 4C hair types. Choose your style preference. Oh yeah, and this is good for medium to long hair. I, I had to throw this one in there to be fair. It's not all about the short hair, but this one, you select your style pattern whether it be the wash and go, two strand twist, finger twist, like I mentioned. And you can pin this on the side or in an updo. Now this style has so many options, it's ridiculous. You know, if my hair was this length, this would definitely be the style of choice for me. Now, whatever style you choose based on your hair length and which four texture you have, it's not hard, especially in these use cases. Most natural hair wearers know after some time, which one would be the best one. Now, if you're a natural newbie, I would definitely determine by product first, you know, by testing your porosity. Now tune into episode five because Naturel describes the importance of knowing your porosity and how to test it for your hair. And this way you get the best out of the product and you get the best style for you. And in this case, you can select any of these if you have the right product. Again, I can never stress this enough. No matter what you choose, Make sure you are keeping your ends moisturized, especially those 4C coarse type textures. It's easily get caught up in breakage, right? So natural hair, right? Let's talk about it. Natural hair can be discouraging and it takes a special person to continue in this journey of maintaining their natural hair without frustration or even giving up. This is why I say it's important to have our kids continue diverting to, no, I didn't mean to say that. I want, I'm like so excited when it comes to the kids. I meant to say to have our kids continue without diverting to manipulate the hair. This is very important for me. 
And this way it doesn't get hard for them. This will have the opportunity to start naturally and to continue naturally. For them, it's not a journey. It's actual life for them as they should not be a transition to embrace. They are already embracing. They are born into it and they are continuing. So let's continue to make it easy for our children. If you're ever feeling challenged in your journey, think about your contributions to the movement and the health of your hair. The movement is about learning how your hair reacts to certain products and environments. The movement is accepting all challenges that come with your natural hair so that you don't divert back to relaxers, wigs, or weaves. The movement is getting familiar with your coils because you're not used to your own natural texture. The movement is everything you need for this journey. It's become a whole new world for us. So take this time to get familiar with your natural, beautiful coils. Even if you have embraced your natural hair already, because to avoid going back, you will have to create a close tight net, res- a close tight net relationship with your hair now. So when those days of frustration set back in, you are ready to tackle it and correct it and then move on. Look, anytime you're in doubt and you need to talk it out with someone, let me know. I can help you through your journey. I can create a blueprint for you so that while you transition to embrace your natural hair, During this time, you will remain confident. You will be willing to continue in this journey. So I am doing free one-on-one 15 to 30 minute sessions to get you back on track. Whether you transition or thinking about it, there is self-doubt at some point of this journey. Trust me, I've had it, but I'm a whole different person now. So let's break down those self-doubts and embrace what we were born with. Okay, message me on IG at Natural Born Sister. And remember, sister has the A-H on the end. Or email me at naturalbornsister at gmail.com. And let's talk. You're here is your lifeline. Because if it wasn't, we would not care about it looking nice or spending tons of money on it uh, and making it a billion dollar industry. Actually, I know I always say this. I think it's two billion now. Whatever it is, it's in the billions and it's a lot of money, okay? It will not continue to grow even if, you know, when you cut it. So it continues on as part of who you are. And the more you put into it to take care of it and style it the way you like, the more life you put into it and the more life you get from it. Your confidence level will skyrocket and not only wearing it in public, but getting up every morning and knowing the next thing you need to do with it, it's fucking amazing. So don't forget that styling your hair with water is very important in maintaining your hair, especially from most people's perspectives. But for mine, it, it's, it's all about styling. It's not something that I love to do is to put water on my hair. But if I can follow those styling techniques that we went over, I'll be fine with that. Your hair can be very dry in certain texture types. So you want to moisturize it with water to include it in your combing and styling. Thank you for joining me in another episode of Kinky in the Kitchen. Check us out on YouTube as well so you can see our intro and outro videos for the show. Some shows have full videos there, full videos there as well. And I'm rocking the natural born tea as usual. So don't forget to get yours so that you can celebrate with me and other women in this natural hair journey who believe that natural at birth should continue through life, sis. You can find the link for the tea in the show notes. And don't forget, we're bringing you kinky content in the kitchen every Wednesday on your favorite cast. Be happy to be nappy. Peace out. That's all for today. What feelings are you left with? Do you have questions, thoughts? DM on IG at Natural Born Sister and let's talk about it. Oh, and don't forget to leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. They really help us grow and reach more women who need company on their hair journey. We'll chat it up next week.